Today I'll briefly go through the scene mode that comes with the Olympus OMD EM10 Mark II. This is the mode here with the letters SCN on it. It's basically an extension of the uh, I Auto mode, uh, but it's tailored for different scenarios according to the subject of the photo. Uh, I um I took a I took a few test shots to see what the effects are straight out of the camera. Um, it's not bad, but most of the scenes uh, need specific setups, like with flashes and backdrops. Okay, so the first one is portraits. Um, so what the camera tries to do is it picks the it tries to pick the lowest aperture to get the best blurry background. That's why portraits look good because the backgrounds are blurry, and the focus is on the actual subject, the portrait of the person or their face. So it sets the it sets the autofocus to single mode and it adds face detect. And if you get the lighting right, it's actually not too bad. Um, it works pretty good. Uh, the next one is um, e-portrait. This does the same as portrait, um, but it takes two photos at once. Uh, the first of the photos is the original, and the second one is touched up by the camera's AI to smooth the skin tones out. If you actually look at it, it does a pretty good job. Um, I'm not sure what it's actually doing, but um, it's probably doing something with the contrast or the sharpness. But if you look closely, you actually will see that it does smooth the skin out and make the uh, make the uh, portrait look a bit better. Landscapes. Uh, this mode this mode brings out the blues and the greens of the landscape. So it what it does is it changes the picture mode to vivid. And it, and it adds a plus one to the contrast and the sharpness. Um, I noticed that also it puts the white balance into sunny mode, which is the normal uh, 5300 Kelvin uh, setting for sunny. Landscape plus portrait. This one is for shooting both the main subject and the background. It's the same as landscape, but the white balance is set back to auto and only the sharpness is increased by one. So as you can see here, um, it it does it does it does a pretty good job. Um, sports, as the name says, uh, this one is when you want to capture fast action without blurring. It turns on uh, the low sequential shutter, so you, so you can hold down the shutter button and take heaps of shots like that. And that and that makes it so you can capture like the winning moment in the in the in the soccer game or whatever. Um, to help with that, it also turns on continuous auto focusing, um, and it also puts on face detect. So it's trying to help you take. It's trying to it's trying to do all the. It's trying to let you just concentrate on the action while it does all the work um, to capture that fast action in the sports game. But don't um, expect miracles with continuous autofocus because I've been mucking around with it and um, I've read a lot online as well that the EM10 range of cameras, the continuous autofocus is uh, <clears throat> not the best. Handheld starlight. Uh, this reduces the blur when shooting in low light and illuminating scenes like uh, city, city nightlife uh, scenes. So what this does is it takes eight frames sequentially with just one press of the button and then they're combined into one photo. So if I just take a photo now, you'll see. I just pressed it once and it just took eight shots straight in a row. Um, I didn't have to hold the button down or anything. And then, I, and then what it does is it combines them into one photo. I guess what it's doing is uh, stacking them to give better dynamic range. Uh, I noticed also it drops um, one third of a stop of the exposure compensation and it reduces the contrast and the sharpness. Uh, night scene, uh, much the same as uh, the handheld starlight one, but it only takes one shot. Um, it tries to use the lowest uh, shutter speed it can, so it's, 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 it's best to, so it's best to use a, a tripod with this one. Night plus portrait. So if it, this one is, this is for shooting the main subject plus the background at night. 
you have to you pop up the flash for that for this one and um, what it does is it sets it to fill in so the flash will always go off and it also turns on the red eye reduction feature and for some reason it sets the white balance to sunny so you see that it does the fill in and it also does the red eye uh, children <clears throat> Uh, photographing children now this one's pretty much the same as sports like I said before um, but what it is is to freeze um, the kids when they run around uh, that's pretty much all that one does uh, I think it's it's exactly the same as sports high key this enhances the bright areas to give that special high key type white balanced look that you see in like magazines and stuff you really need to set up the scene to get the this effect right. Uh, wh what I did was I um, I used my softbox and I put the subject behind that to get that white background. Uh, that's a, a, a nice easy cheat that you can use. Um, but you really need a flash um, and as you can see by my dodgy attempt here um, you need a heap of uh, post processing as well to get that feature. So I think what I'll do with this one is I'll I'll revisit this one and make a dedicated video for that. So when I was taking the portraits and the high key photos, mainly the high key photos, to get a white backdrop I just used these uh, soft boxes. I actually found these soft boxes on the side of a road, someone was chucking them out. So, um, and so I'll show you, um, if you turn it on, um, so if you, if you turn it on you get that, like, that white, the white background. That's a, that's an uh, an easy cheap way of just getting a uh, and that's a really uh, easy uh, no fuss way of getting a, a white background, um, and what you do is you obviously zoom in so and you can probably put that in portrait mode uh, or whatever and you can uh, zoom in so that the rest of the scene is out of is out and then you just get that white background. I mean it's really only good for uh, headshots really, so that's just uh, one quick way that I did it. Low key, um, I tried this, yeah, as you can see, I tried this a few times um, and I wasn't very good at it. Um, like I said, you, you need to set things up. A, a simple press of the button on a setting isn't going to give you exactly um, what you need. I mean, I tried to use a uh, torch. I mean, I'll need to study this one a bit more as well. Uh, surprisingly, though, um, I took a photo of my dog in the black car and I didn't know that setting was on. And it actually turns out pretty good using that setting with the darkness, with the dark backdrop um, and the subject in the middle. So, uh, DIS mode. So what this stands for is uh, digital image stabilization. Basically, this one makes sure that your image stabilization is turned on for one thing, and the ISO is bumped up. So that means that then your shutter speed needs to be high to uh, to balance the light. So what that does is to stop the shaky hands. So um, you'd be surprised um, a lot of shots are out of focus or blurry because even though you think that you, your hands aren't shaking, they are shaking. So the the actually the eye, eye burst they call in body image stabilization, Olympus actually has the best in the <coughs> has has the best in the world. So um, that's what that mode is for. Uh, candle, um, what this does is it, it enhances uh, the warm colors that you get like with fire candles. Um, you can get the same thing if you go into the live guide um, and then you use those sliders to make it warmer. It's the same thing, it's just a, it's a quick way to do it. Sunset, uh, it's very similar. Um, it's also, and also very similar to landscaping, but instead of bringing the green and the blues up, it brings the reds and the oranges uh, up, so as in like a sunset, so the sun. And uh, I noticed that also it drops the exposure compensation considerably by two thirds of a stop. So I guess what that's trying to do is it doesn't blow out the photo too much because you're pointing directly at the sun. So that's why it drops the exposure compensation for that documents um, so what this is is just taking photos of of, 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 of printed uh, documents um, it's 
pretty handy if you don't have a scanner around. Um, uh, it's just, I think what it does is it um, increases the contrast. Panorama. This uh, scene brings up a guide on the live view and in the EVF also. You can then use this to line up your shots to take a panoramic uh, photo. So you can use the lines inside the frame there to uh, line up the shots one by one as you pan across the horizon. You can take up to 10 shots and it'll actually number them for you until you press the menu button and then it'll stop numbering the shots. Now it won't actually stitch them together and make one photo in, in camera. You'll have to um, stitch them together in post-processing uh, using the Olympus workspace or whatever software that you have. What, what the setting does for you is it locks the focus and the exposure on the first photo and then it sets that to all the other photos that you take after it. So that way uh, everything will look seamless. Panning. So if you've ever seen an action shot where there's a subject frozen in focus and then the background is out of focus or blurry, um, that was taken um, using a trick called panning. So what it when you set it here into panning, it turns on continuous autofocus with low continuous shooting. So same as sports really. Um, obviously you need the continuous uh, shooting and the autofocus because you need to catch the right moment so you take a heap of shots and then it, it, the right one so if you ever see people they go like this they're you know the a bikes um, driving uh, a bike say a, a, a motorbikes um, going past and and he goes like that so what you're doing is you're trying to keep up with the bike and because your the shutter speeds lower um, you've got the bike in sync but the background's going to be all out of whack so that's what panning is uh, I haven't tried it yet so I'm going to muck around with it And uh... so I went out today and took some shots and it's actually not too bad I noticed the shutter speed is around uh, 60, 50 to 60 to 70 to 80 seconds and the focus wasn't that good on some of the shots some of them came out right uh, for the first go, it wasn't that hard actually, um, the cars weren't going that fast. On the panning setting, it sets it around 50 or 60 seconds, and the I think the, what let me down is the manual autofocus, but other than that, it's actually not too bad. And so, and the, the, rest, the rest of the settings are a, a, like a fisheye, wide angle, macro, and 3D photos. Now for that, you're all going to need some uh, special lenses that go with that, uh, except for macro, which can be done using extension tubes. So these things here, so I'll, I'll have a video on how to do that as well. And that's the cheap way of, of, um, of doing macro without buying like a $500 macro lens uh, or the, the adapter on top, which I still think is like 150 bucks just for the uh, macro um, lens that goes on the top of the of your normal lens so that's it so try them out and uh, don't expect miracles like I said with these settings um, but they are a quick and an easy way to shoot basic shots of a particular scene in mind I, I, I've been using it for a few weeks now just uh, I found it as a great way uh, to get me out and start experimenting and, and shooting and working on my composition uh, rather than worrying about all the settings and the manual and you know it's a good way to you know to to flip uh, to use the uh, auto features just to get you out there and, and start shooting and um, and learning the camera um, without worrying about shutter speed aperture etc ISO um, that's it uh, next video I'll see you then Stay